Hello everyone, this is Patrick from Security and Privacy Academy. Today we are talking about the Off the Record or OTR protocol, so let's jump into it. First of all, the name uh, Off the Record derives uh, from talking off the record to the press, meaning that anything that follows, anything I say, must not be published, and if it is published, then the interviewee can and will uh, at all times deny having said that. So the OTR protocol is a synchronous protocol, which means that both conversation partners have to be online at the same time, uh, as opposed to asynchronous protocols where I can send a message um, to anybody who is offline and they'll receive it as soon as they, they come online. This is called asynchronous messaging uh, and OTR does not support that. OTR is a synchronous uh, protocol. Um, and this is a, a usability problem, which um, I will also address later. Um, there exist uh, many implementations for OTR on Pidgin and Jabber and then also other uh, instant messaging apps. And um, it's a four-step protocol. And the first step is called Authenticated Key Exchange. Now, OTR uses a Diffie-Hellman variant called Sigma to handle authentication, as you as you maybe know, Diffie-Hellman uh, key exchange does not handle authentication, so man-in-the-middle attacks are possible. Um, so that's why um, Sigma is used uh, in OTR. And the authentication is done via the long-term public keys of the conversation partners. Um, it's important that um, uh, only the communication partners are authenticated this way, not the messages themselves. The messages are authenticated later uh, via the keyed Mac. Uh, which I'll talk about actually in the next step, uh, which is called message transmission. <clears throat> the messages are encrypted using AES, so the Advanced Encryption Standard, and authenticated using the keyed MAC. Uh, MAC is short for Message Authenticating uh, Authentication Code. And the uh, AES is used in counter mode, which ensures plausible deniability of the conversation partners as counter mode makes cipher texts uh, malleable. Uh, what that means in detail, I'll discuss maybe in another video. Um, just know that the modified cipher texts they still decrypt to a valid plain text. So if you modify a cipher text, it's still able that it that it decrypts to a valid plain text. So it's not nonsense. It's not rubbish. It's it's actually it's clear. So an adversary can thus forge the conversations in a way that allows the conversation partners to claim that it was not their message but indeed a forged one. So if a message would um, would appear somewhere, you can say, no, that wasn't me, because the protocol actually allows adversaries to forge messages. So you can always say, no, that wasn't me. <clears throat> so the, the keys are calculated from a shared secret, which is exchanged uh, via the Diffie-Hellman. So a hash function is applied to the shared secret, and the result is the encryption key, which is used to encrypt messages. Next, this symmetric key is also hashed, and the result is the MAC key. Now, the actual uh, thing that made OTR special, and which also echoes still today, uh, is the next step, which is called rekey. Keys are calculated um, anew uh, every time the conversation changes directions. So if Alice sends a message to Bob, then the keys are changed as soon as Bob answers. So every time the, the, uh, the conversation changes direction, the keys are recalculated. So the new keys are established and all encryption keys are deleted, which ensures perfect word secrecy. Um, however, and this is very important, this is something I talked about before, old Mac keys are not deleted because we need them in order to forge messages, right? So instead they are published on the next step which is called Publish Mac Key. And they are published by being attached to the next message in plain text. So the Mac Key is in plain text available to everyone. And as, as previously stated, this allows an adversary to forge transcripts of whole conversations, thus um, enabling the conversation partners to plausibly deny that, that, it, uh, that it was their message. So this is, um, this is linked to the protection goal of non-repudiation, which in this case it's, it's basically turned turn on, on its head as OTR's purpose is to allow repudiation of the conversation partners. 
So to summarize, the OTR protocol covers all of the protection goals, at least partially. Um, it even allows for anonymity. Um, the, 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 whole, the whole process of changing keys, which is something that still echoes, for example, in Signal, is called ratcheting. And um, I've talked about ratcheting uh, before uh, in another video. Uh, in, in When I covered the Signal protocol, um, you'll find the video at the end of this one. Um, however, OTR does not allow group chats. There is no asynchronous com uh, communication. Um, so both conversation partners have to be online at the same time. So its main purpose is internet chatting and this is what it was designed to do. Okay, uh, that concludes today's video. Thank you for watching and tell me in the comments which topics you would like me to cover next. Like and subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video.